What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. Y'all hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate everybody that's been rocking with me. So let's get to this topic, right? So when I made the video, well, discussion about, I made a video about J. Cole's diss to Kendrick Lamar, right? Um, and when I made that video, I talked about, I was breaking down certain things that Cole said. I talked about how Cole was going through Kendrick Lamar's discography and how, you know, he felt like Good Kid, Mad City was a dope album, but he felt like To Pimp a Butterfly was trash. He, I'm not trash. He felt like, um, yeah, he said it was basically like a snooze fest and how people gassed it, but it really wasn't that good. And I remember when T To Pimp a Butterfly came out. It was a lot of people who are big hip hop heads that did not like that album. It was a lot of big Kendrick fans that really, really loved the album, right? And so I never felt like To Pimp a Butterfly was a classic, but you got some people that do. And so I say, you know what? I'm going to take that conversation and I'm going to move past To Pimp a Butterfly. And I'm going to talk about what is the criteria for an album to be a classic album, right? To me, in order for an album to be classic, it got to be, be, it got to be felt in, Areas where black folks live at, it got to be felt in them communities. Why? Because hip-hop is a genre created by black folks, right? And to me, for an album to be a classic, it has to have the pulse of the community. It got to galvanize the people, right? What do I mean by that? Like, you don't, I'm not saying you got to go and run and go buy the album, but you playing songs off of that album, right? You can't help but to play this song, to play that song. Oh, I like that song. I like that song. I like that song. I don't know a lot of y'all not going to like me starting with this because y'all going to say, why does it have to be about race? It be about race. I'm sorry. Hip hop is a genre created by black folks. Yes, other black, other is non-black people that participate in it. And, and, and it's some of them that rap that it, rap extremely well. And I'm not mad at that at all. I'm not mad at people participating in it. What I'm saying is that the culture derives from the black community. Hip hop got soul up in it, man. And so... If black folks ain't vibing with the album, like if we ain't listening to it, we ain't worried about it, we ain't just got to not like it. If we ain't worried about it, it ain't on our radar, we ain't listening to it, we don't really like, it's not something that we would really like um, um, be, I guess, attached to or enamored with. Or not all of us, not all of us uh, universally, not all of us, um, um, what's the word I'm looking absolutely, but... A lot of us got to be vibing with the album. We ain't worried about it. We ain't, it ain't getting no play over here. It's really not a classic to me, right? Um, and I say that because it's certain albums that even if they people didn't buy the album, you had to play these songs. Listen, I knew Get Rich or Die Trying was a classic when my grandfather, God rest his soul, my granddaddy bought the album. Now, my grandfather wasn't no old, old man. But when Get Rich came out, he was in his 50s at the time, right? Um, yeah, he was in his... Uh, Get Rich came out... Uh, or, yeah, he was, he was probably early 50s at the time, right? My grandfather is downstairs in, his, in the basement because he had, like, he made a studio in the basement. He downstairs, and my grandfather played the drums and all different type of instruments. My grandfather was listening to In the Club. He listening to If I Can't, P-I-M-P, -P, right? My grandmama loved 21 Questions. You hear me? She couldn't, you couldn't escape the songs from them albums and people was not, that people was gravitating to the singles from them albums. Like, yo, it's a fire song. Even if they didn't go get the CD, it was like you had people thinking about getting it when they heard the singles. Same thing with like, I'm like, hold on. I'm going to use, uh, this is a perfect example to me, right? When Jeezy dropped Thug Motivation 101, my mama heard and then what? And she wanted to go run and go get that. She, my, my uh, uncle, her go crazy. What? My mom and them heard my hood, Soul Survivor. You couldn't escape it, bro. It was just like, it was magnetic. Same thing with Urban Legend with Tip. You don't know me. ASAP, bring them out. Like, it, it, man, it, you, you could not escape it, right? And to me, a classic album needs cohesion. Like, it don't need to, like... Every album don't have to sound like the same or sound like it has to be in the same scheme or format or it has to be all one big story that goes one one goes one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. But it has to feel like some of these albums belong, like, like these songs belong, like for the most part, for the most part. They got to feel like, OK, these songs belong to me like, damn, you know, this one just don't sound like why is this on this album? What is this? And again, you're going to have some. You're going to have some, and sometimes it's usually radio hits. But it's some that be like, yo, what is this song? No, man, this just don't sound like it flowed together. The album got to sound like it flows. Like, 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 okay, 
this sound good all together. You got some albums that one song sound good here at the beginning, one song good sound good at the end, and then all this shit in the middle just sound all mixed up and just like I ain't, I'm not fucking with it, right? Um, so I like cohesion. Um, I think a classic album, it, you, it has to have impact. It has to have impact. Did it start a trend? Did it shift the culture? Did it make a statement? The albums I named, Get Rich or Die Trying, definitely made a statement. 50's debut album went diamond. That's crazy, right? Jeezy, when he dropped up Motivation 101, it made a statement that he was a solo artist, even though he was on Bad Boy and the Boys in the Hood. No, it showed he was a superstar without question. And that trap music, the trap rap, was still can still be hard hit, <coughs> hard hitting. It could still be, it doesn't have to be extremely lyrical and you can still feel it. It's still feel within your soul when you play that. You feel like Jeezy giving you his life on that album. Whether it's lyrical, Jeezy ain't never been lyrical, but you still feel like, yo, he's giving me his, his life on this album and it means a lot to him. And he's selling it to us with confidence, with the bravado, uh, um, with wordplay, with with um, um, just authenticity, but he's able to make a song sound good. He has a great flow. Do a great. He got a great delivery. The ad libs are great, right? Um, I think about Tupac, "All Eyes on Me." Um, when Pac dropped "All Eyes on Me," I'm finna go to the um to the uh to the what you call it to the track list, right? Pac, first of all, it's a double disc, and it's one of the most legendary double disc of all <laughs> of all time. Like, listen, double disc. You see, you drop a double disc. Like, because of All Eyes on Me, it set the standard. Like, hey, man, that shit better be hard. It better be tough. Because you hear me when he got All About You on here? How do you want it? Two of America's Most Wanted? Come on, man. Like, like California Love, I Ain't Mad At You, Got My Mind Made Up. Ambition, first of all, it opens with ambitions as a rider. That's the song, my chapter, the dirty thing to me. We still use that, the Kappas. We smooth brothers. We strolled off of... Ambitions as a rider, the Smooth Brothers. It cut is just that impactful. Same thing, same thing. Doggy style. When you hear look, Jenny and Juice, like it's like, man, this shit is just like, ugh. It was just Jenny and Juice, who I am. Murder was the case. Ain't no fun. Come on, man. I love ain't no fun. Crazy, right? Women love that damn song, even though it says a lot of a, a lot of stuff that some people would, well, not some, a ton of people would deem. Most people would deem it super, super, super derogatory towards women. But it's a fire song, man, <clears throat> with Nate Dogg over it, right? An album needs, a, for, it, for it to be a classic, it needs strong replay va value. You can't escape listening to it again. An album is not a classic if you heard it one time <clears throat> and you don't go back to it. Like, you don't keep going back to it. You heard it one time, you you take you about a year to get back, back around to it. That's not a classic. If it's a classic, you can't stay away from it. You cannot, like, I could not stay away from Get Rich or Die Trying. I could not. I could not stay away from, I'm trying to think of some um some other uh, albums that I feel like was that. Juvenile, the um, 400 Degrees. I couldn't stay away from that, bro. I could not stay away from it. Um, Tip, Trap Music. I couldn't stay away from that album, bro. I could not. I kept going back, going back, going back to that album, man. It was so fire to me. So fire. I kept going back to the black album. You know, I kept going back to um I'm now I'm naming something top of my head. Um uh to all eyes on me within itself. I kept going back to it. I could not escape it. You feel me? Like, like, I know my uncles never would tell you the same thing. They be like, yo, when they heard um um Illmatic, they could not escape. They had to keep going back to it, right? Um, I think a, a classic album needs great beats. It does, man. The production matters, man. The production impacts. Because some songs are it's fire. But when you play it in a ride or in on a step or in the house at a stereo or something, it hit hard. Like, like it's great production and matched up with great delivery. Great delivery is everything. The delivery of an artist, that's why we love Pac. His delivery. That's why we love, I guess I love Jeezy. Delivery, man. Just the delivery of it, man. I think it need great flows. You need to hear a flow like water, like Biggie. When you hear me, when you hear life after death, what? <laughs> when you hear life after death and you hear them flows, you hear me, ready to die? Come on, you hear that flow, you like, yo, I, I cannot, I have to 
this it it it, it makes it even more emphatic. Um, a, a classic album needs it needs to me it needs great wordplay, right? Um, again, Jeezy was never a great lyricist, but when I'm hearing him say certain things. And calculate my every steps. I'm a mathematician. Make them pigeons disappear. I'm a damn magician. Or cash rules everything around me. So what's realer? About the Skrilla call me a ghost face killer. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not. <laughs> he's not super duper lyrical smiracle. But he giving you the wordplay shit sound good, man. And it's convincing. Right? I do think, though, a classic album needs some lyricism to it. Did he had some lyrics, some lyricism, but he wasn't no super lyrical dude. But sometimes I think if you got great wordplay, you have great delivery, um, um, you know how to ride a beat. It doesn't need super lyrical, smirical things on it, right? Um, I think it needs some form of storytelling, some form of storytelling in the album, not a whole concept album, but it needs some storytelling to help you sell that. I think it. I think it helps, man. Um, and again, this is the most important uh, part of what a classic album is. It got to be felt in not just one subsection of black folks, right? <laughs> not just, or I'm gonna just say subsection of folks too, but black folks, I'm saying too. But it got to be felt in more than just one subsection of folks. Like I'm gonna say, folks, people. It ain't the back. The black. Uh, the backpackers can't be the only one that feel it. The fans of underground hip hop and all that, they can't be the only ones that feel it. The preppy dudes can't be the only ones that feel it, right? Um, the hood dudes can't be the only ones that feel it. Right? You know what I mean? The emo brothers can't be the only one that feel that album. You got to have a different type of people, subsections of people feeling that album. Uh, it got to be not. It's not. It, it, it got to be able to cross. Different demographics of people, not just 45-year-old men playing it. For real, man. I think that matters, man. Like, I, I'm going to give you, um, because let me say, when Kanye dropped, when late registration, college dropout dropped, it wasn't just nerds listening to that or, or preppy college kids listening to that. It was all different type of people listening. It was hood dudes listening to Kanye. Street dudes, damn well in Chicago, I knew. Early Kanye, early, early Kanye, late registration, college dropout, hell yeah. Because you just heard him rapping like, bro, I, I'm sold. I'm sold on this, brother. It wasn't just the backpackers rocking or uh, listening to Kanye. It wouldn't have been as, it wouldn't have been a classic if that was the case, right? And to me, to me, <laughs> now if people going to disagree, I feel like one of them songs on the album got to get some play at the at black functions, at the baby shower. <laughs> Y'all know I'm talking about got to galvanize the black community. At the baby shower, the birthday party, the graduation party, family reunion, goddamn the stepper set, <laughs> at, uh, I don't know, the fish fry, the Labor Day barbecue, the parade. <laughs> the block party it gotta be played somewhere all them albums I just named y'all late registration, college dropout trap music from tip, um, Tupac all eyes on me Dr. Uh, uh, Snoop Dogg um, Doggy Style Dr. Dre the Chronic um, Thug Motivation 101 these songs got played at black functions they did. Whether like they, if some black function, a song came on and black folks didn't holler, turn that shit off unless it was just too explicit. You know what I mean? Or and and, and you didn't want Big Mama and them cussing you out about it, right? Or maybe you want to just dance and it was like a slow song. But at some point, the songs got. I'm talking about on the classic got played at black functions and black folks was fine with it, not yelling, cut it off just because they thought it was trash. That's what makes a classic album.